there are those, of course, who say that coaching is a pink and fluffy subject, and typically they are the very individuals that actually haven't experienced coaching for themselves. But the evidence that we've seen suggests otherwise, and there are a lot of case studies that testify to that in, in the book and in, in the coaching literature generally. And certainly through our evaluation work, we've seen many examples where coaching has very definitely had a very significant uh, business impact way beyond uh, what was expected originally. In spite of that, coaching is often still not seen as being a top priority on many business agendas. Um, there are probably many reasons for that, uh, particularly the fact that perhaps many of the decision makers, the senior managers who are involved in setting uh, organisational priorities, haven't necessarily experienced coaching firsthand for themselves. Um, but in addition, coaching, even where it has been tried, it hasn't always been related directly to business objectives. And this is something that Jackie and I talk a lot about in the book, the, the real need to align the purpose for coaching with quite specific business needs. We then think that these views can be changed by presenting a new business case for coaching. And nothing can be more convincing than being able to point to evidence that coaching has made a real business impact. So we suggest how the business case can be sold, how evidence can be built up, um, how that can be compared with um, other possible investments that might be being considered alongside or as an alternative to coaching. And certainly from the people that we've spoken to, there are many examples where coaching can be very directly aligned with business need. Uh, for example, um, we've seen very dramatic uh, turnaround stories, individuals perhaps who are underperforming, um, who were struggling to fit in within a team, who as a result of coaching have come to a new realisation about how others perceive them. They've perhaps come to recognise their own um, potentiality and have had a new motivation, a new inspiration, if you like, to actually start making a difference. We've also seen coaching help individuals who've come into new roles um, in coming to terms with networking with new people, settling in, uh, coming to terms with their, their new responsibilities and consolidating their learning. And also coaching has been very beneficial for the um, so-called high flyers. That's not a term we particularly like, but the individuals who have been perhaps marked out for a fast track progression, those who are seen as having a particular strong contribution to make at a, a more senior level. Um, coaching has had a very dramatic impact in terms of helping them find uh, career direction and again consolidate learnings and reflect upon their experience and their potential and, and bringing that um, into a, a sharper focus. So many, many examples. A lot of these to do with behavioural or mindset change uh, and not just an individual level as well. Coaching as we describe in the book quite, quite often, um, can also be applied at a group or a team level. And there too, for example, in problem solving, in creative thinking, in inviting and embracing ideas from the team as a whole rather than from just um, one or two individuals, um, coaching has had a very valuable impact.